We must address and master the future together. I am black and proud. You die when you refuse to stand up for right. We want to live as decent human beings in America. When you see something that is not right, not fair, yeah. not just, yeah. say something, yeah. do something, get in trouble, good trouble, necessary trouble. It might seem like we're trying to rock the mic. The real deal is we're trying to fight the good fight. When I think of black history, I think of American history. Just the overall endurance and perseverance that we as a community have had. I think about how black history affects me in regards to my family in the past and then currently now in regards to what I want to do. Moments when you bring them together, they call it history. Black history began on the continent of Africa. So in that regard, I'm, I'm automatically thinking of civilizations. And I'm thinking of the now Valley civilization and the contributions we gave to this world and to this planet. We have influenced every facet of the world. But I think that Black history is much deeper than our history in this country. Um, although chattel slavery um, played a huge role in, the in, the, in our economy and in the entire world's understanding of race and Blackness, um, Black history start, it, it really is rooted in Africa. So it's not enough to, to just talk about us one month of the year in February. Um, I think of slavery and the contributions and the struggles of African Americans uh, yesterday and today. Um, being Afro Latino, I think too about just the uniqueness of Blackness and how fast we, we span across the diaspora. I remember my mom telling me the story of, you know, how Memphis was on lockdown after Martin Luther King's assassination and how her as a child was told by a, a, a soldier with a gun on his shoulder, get in the house. One of the problems I have when we talk about Black history is that we overlook these missing pages of our history. But there could be instances where we have contributed, uh, where we can talk about it every day of the year. We are people 400 years who have come from slavery to opportunity and that and we still have challenges. So again, history is so special, but it's only most appreciated when people can look back and say, oh my goodness, how far have we come? You know, it's so significant to tell the story. If you don't know where you've been, how in the hell can you know where you're going? Storytelling is one of the best avenues we have in order to carry on our history. And I think um, a lot can get lost on why certain things are important to be put in place to the generations coming up if you don't know about the past. Being able to share with the younger generation also lets them know who they are and what they come from. I was raised to understand Black history and Black stories, Black leaders, um, impactful Black people throughout history. And that gave me a very strong racial identity. If we don't tell our history, we don't know where we're going. If you don't know about racial banking discrimination practices, when you read a, racial dis a racially discriminating banking practice, you might not think it is. You might, oh, well, this is fine, this is okay. But if you don't know the historical context of why that is wrong and why this is a problem, then you might not know that this needs to be changed. Because there was a time when people could kick you in the butt or whip you and make your back bleed and you dare not say anything. You couldn't say anything. But now we do have an opportunity to tell our story. So it's important for us to give our own voice to our history. We have to know our past. We have to understand the tremendous contributions that we've made again to the world. We need to tell our story. We need to tell about every tear, every strike. And, and, and it allows them to understand that they come from people who are extremely uh, strong and have endured some unimaginable things. And that's very important that we pass it from generation to generation because that will give us our compass as we attempt to navigate 
ourselves through these uncharted waters that they call America. Black history is American history. Black history is deeply interwoven in every part and facet of American history. You couldn't have this country without Black people. The legacy of, of uh, Black history is in the music. Higher and higher, higher and higher, higher and higher into the light. Black music is the indigenous sound to this country. And it began with field hollers. And then that evolved into spirituals and gospels. And then blues. And then jazz, rhythm and blues, ragtime, soul, neo soul, pop. So our very culture is embedded in the soil of America. work that we put in to build this country. It was built on the backs of our ancestors. We have very much intertwined with American history. The labor of African-Americans has contributed to the economy of this nation in undeniable ways, uh, ways that have cost African-Americans uh, so much. Once you understand that, once you read our history, and you must read it, it's written. We must take the time to know it, to know the truth about it. And once you get that, the, the rest is easy. The, the makeup of, of who we are is what the world is. We have, as I said, we have contributed in every facet of the world that we know, uh, in, in history, in music, in sports. Not to mention the inventions of the stoplight or the gas mask with Gerd Morgan, or the peanut with George Washington Carver. So our history is, is, is a major contribution in the development of America itself. Uh, we, we have been contributors in architecture, every facet that is required to live in, mod in the modern world has been um, influenced by our culture. Sometimes we forget that we're not just the help. We're not the help. We are the purpose. We built that capital that they tried to take over the other day. We built this country. We contributed. And the biggest legacy to pass it on, that our young people realize that we're not an aberration. We're not an excuse. Well, I, I think about, um, you know, Black history contributes uh, disproportionately to the makeup of America uh, from uh, our historically and undeniable fortitude of faith, uh, which has uh, fueled our culture for generations. I want us to look at Black history not just as a moment or moments or a collection of, of, of times of, of overcoming, but a foundation for us to continue to set where we need to be. Our American flag is is very much um, seeped in the blood of, of Black lives, and we we have to make sure that that is um, focused on, and, and that is something that people understand that you cannot have American history without Black history. We come from King Queens priestesses, priest, skilled laborers, laborers, skilled labor forces. We were not mindless, monolithic black bodies shoved onto a ship. African-Americans uh, are a people that have a, a fortitude of faith. Uh, we, we believe in possibility through perseverance. We have one of the most creative, spiritually grounded groups of, of people in the entire world. Our culture was very much so grounded in spirituality and a belief in a higher power or higher powers um, as some uh, polytheistic traditions would believe. 
Um, I think that it's extremely important to understand that our communities and our people have been very, very resilient and strong um, throughout throughout history, throughout dealing with challenges like colonialism or uh, chattel slavery or racism. You know, we our people have dealt with challenges that many other communities have not faced. We were the cradle of civilization. We taught people how to wash when they were still living in caves. We are the focal point for art and mathematics and history and riches and, and storytelling and beauty and everything wonderful in the world has its place starting in Africa. And don't ever mistake the decisions that colonizers and colonialistic behaviors of other people and how they try to drive that out of us and out of who we are as being who we are. Because we're not, we're beautiful, beautiful beings. America, land of the free. It's at the core of who we are. Freedom. The freedom to live without fear, to drive through all 50 states, to sleep safely in our own beds, the freedom to jog where we please, to watch birds in the park, to wear a hoodie, the freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because no matter your religion, gender, disability, age, race, all lives can't matter until black lives matter. What's more dangerous? A man who isn't afraid of death or one who's found everything to live for. I asked him if he was proud of me. He emphatically said yes as he laid his pecan-colored head on my chest. And I went through my mind a thousand times to figure out what that could possibly mean. And every single example ended in motivation for me. So you may not be afraid to die, but I'm more afraid to let them down. And I found something to live for, which is a dangerous motive forever fueled. See, your thoughts may be involuntary, but my actions are very calculated. I was a man with a plan, but now I'm a dad with a decree, and you can't take that from me. My sons ain't raised by no coward, and they won't be one either. If this be the measure of a man, the yardstick gonna need way more meters. I take it too far, so they never come up short, because I found everything to live for. Our spirit, like our history, is strong. List of challenges and wrongs, more powerful than pain. Document a determination for equality. The oral tradition has always been our tradition. You know, we had our own system of writing, our own system of communicating, our own system of keeping track of different things. I think that storytelling through poetry, through literature, through music, just, I think that it's, it's hugely important. It's how we have been able to persevere for so long is being able to weave our struggles, but also our triumphs through song and being able to share those experiences with each other. We have we have so many griots, as I would say. Gri a griot is a traditional term in, in African cultures for a storyteller. And we have we have so many griots um, in, in our culture. Stories told over and over and over again and to the point where, you know, you felt like you were there. It wasn't written down. It was held in the hearts and in the voice of the people. So the griot is a significant part of our history. And it's an integral part of our history. And you think about what these rappers are saying and doing things. They're giving us stories. They're the modern day griots. 
having that history and, and having it articulated to us in that manner is, is very effective. If we don't tell our story, then there are those uh, who will tell a story that is not based in our reality. We have to record our experience as a people. Uh, we have to make sure that when we do speak, we are heard. It is extremely important to continue um, the practice of capturing um, our history orally, um, because you never know when the time may come and where things um, are not, you know, are said that they didn't happen. There will always be those forces that be that may or may not be aligned with our goals as a people, but it's truly up to us to, uh, to be the ones telling the story. We must be commanding, as was Amanda Gorman, who spoke so eloquently and who absolutely told the story of Black America. In five minutes plus, she told the story. She told her story. She told our story. She told America's story. And that's the power of the oral tradition. Black Lives Matter is a movement that is critical. Black Lives Matter can often seem like this national overarching conversation with very little uh, local implications. Uh, but that's just not the truth, especially here in Prince George's County. Black Lives Matter has existed for years now because Black Lives Matter has been around since Trayvon Martin was killed in 2012. And um, I think that the Black Lives Matter movement is really important and is really effective because of the slogan itself. Like Black Lives Matter. Like that statement is alone just a statement, period. It's, it, there's no qualifiers, there's no adding things, there's no saying that other lives don't matter. It's literally saying Black Lives Matter. And when you believe that Black Lives Matter, you operate in a different capacity than what we have been seeing. It allows people to attach themselves to something greater than themselves and allows them to uh, advance the movement and to let people know this is what I stand for. I'm not gonna stand for injustices. I'm not gonna stand for undeserved killing by police. I'm not gonna stand for systemic racism. And I'm going to use my position and use my power to fight against these forces. Our, our own police force, um, they, they have had serious, serious complaints about abuses towards the, the largely uh, black community of Prince George's County. Uh, we have our own Trayvon Martins. Uh, we have our own um, issues of injustice. You know, we have William Green, uh, Leonard Shan, Archie Elliott, just to name a few um, that were murdered here in our county. There was an incident with a, a man, I believe his name was DeMonte Ward, and it was a traffic stop and they paralyzed this man from the waist down. He's, he's paralyzed, right? This happened within the past year. Technology and, and having 24 seven news coverage has been a, a huge help. Having the cell phone and, and being able to capture all the injustices has been huge. The, the capturing of images and the knowledge that um, the white community was subsequently terrorizing and killing and mar marring black bodies um, is, is, is unfortunately nothing new to the black community. What is new um, in regards to this new civil rights era is just how much we can translate, unfortunately, those terrible images into a powerful movement to keep the change going. It has become uh, the, the bullhorn for any person of conscience. Black Lives Matter performed and they organized in a communal kind of way. It was a collective type of leadership. Working to change the procedures, working to change the policies, working to change the legislation that so that we are protected by the people that say that they're, to, they're here to protect us. When you, you believe Black Lives Matter, you act in a totally different manner towards the Black lives that you are around, um, even being a Black life yourself, as well as when you are in, um, in positions of power, like police are, um, 
in regards to how you interact with them and, and what you do with them and how you speak to them and how uh, you value their lives. The fact that that the organization exists and, and does work, does grassroots organizing work in communities um, for several on several different fronts, economic, social, political. They do a lot of work um, on those fronts, but there, there's also a slogan attached to it, BLM, Black Lives Matter, that anybody can associate themselves with. All you have to do is get a piece of paper, write BLM on us on a, and make a sign, and you're automatically associated with the Black Lives Matter movement and so and advancing social justice in this country. Moving forward, BLM and other groups, I think, need to really focus on meeting the needs of the communities that they serve. We have to first have self-love, love for others embrace our community and be on the same page with what our purpose is. There should be like a huge focus on changing the laws and legislations and policies and procedures that allow for these things to happen and then allow for the people who do them to just go about their merry way. Uh, making sure that they're working with other groups such as mutual aids, other nonprofit groups to really serve whatever the needs are in their community, whether it's workforce development and job placing, whether it's helping individuals with housing, whether it's stopping evictions, whether it's just stepping up for community. We need to peel back the onion, and we all know onions will make you cry, but those are uh, cleansing tears, you see? Those are cleansing tears when you peel back the onion. Black Lives Matter, if they haven't done anything else for us, they have brought us to this point where we all should realize, if we don't, that we need a Truth and Recon Reconciliation Commission to really get down to the root causes of systemic racism and to really peel back the onion so that we can cleanse ourselves of this evil. The disparities within our community are due to historically um, local, state, and national policies, laws, legislation, and procedures that are racially discriminant, discriminatory towards us as Black people. We, we have in, in many Black communities in this country, there are food deserts where, the, where it's very, very difficult for people to find healthy eating options or eating or eating options that don't lead to diabetes or high blood pressure or many of the ailments that the black community faces. If I'm already dealing with diabetes and bad hearts and eat the wrong thing, so when Mr. Cobra Co Corona flies into my nose, I'm gonna have a, a greater risk of dying because of what I did before I got to Corona. What was revealed even more in depth uh, during the pandemic about these disparities, I think about, well, who has been in power? How long have they been in power? And what laws have they created or what legislation or what policies have they created that would cause generational change to unravel these disparities within our community? We need to come together and understand that there is a problem in this country with racism. There is a problem in this country with classism and economic um, stratification. And we need to come together and recognize that these issues are issues for all people, not just some people. They're issues for all people and should be addressed on, on a grand scale. Having honest conversation amongst community is really key here. And being able to highlight and address what issues we do want to tackle. There is a balance that must be struck and so, uh... African-Americans, uh, I think, are owed a debt that some who came to this country uh, under different circumstances were provided. It is difficult to, to work to change something without acknowledging the source of it. The source of all these racial disparities are laws, policies, procedures, legislation, whatever you want to call it, that are put in place by the people that we elect. We can do so much by ourselves but it's gonna take additional resources from the county, from the state, um, and from the federal level. We need to agitate the system and let them know that that our community is facing this oppression and that this, this injustice 
and that we're not okay with it. We're, we're not okay with not having access to quality food. We're not okay with the high blood pressure and the diabetes that, that um, environmental racist forces places on our community. The next step after identifying those issues are to work with in coalition with organizations, with our leadership, with faith-based faith partners, as well as nonprofits to help figure out a strategy to tackle those problems. I appreciate living in a community and where my elected officials look like me. I appreciate that. I think representation matters, but I also believe that representation is not enough, right? I don't want you to just look like me. I want you to pass laws and, and policies and legislations that will help people who look like me. It's gonna take collaboration and being able to really move the needle on what our community needs is gonna require us to meet the moment. Um, and that means stepping up in ways that we haven't seen before, being extremely innovative in this moment of COVID to be able to make sure that the future, we don't have some of these similar problems. It harkens back to my first statement or uh, what I previously said, not just having these moments, these historic moments and being proud of these historic moments, but taking these historic moments and having them be the foundation of real generational change. You know, I think that is really what's important. And when we talk about changing the racial disparity dynamics, changing what is fundamentally in place in these institutions that continue to perpetuate that. And how do you do that? By changing the laws. So we have to start looking at our legislators and really saying, what are you doing? What are you doing? What laws are you passing to really help us and not help us for this pandemic, right? Or not just, not just help us for this pandemic, not just help us for this moment, but to continuously help us to where we have generation after generation that is gonna keep growing and expanding. We shouldn't be in the same place that we were 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. We should not be fighting the same issues, fighting the same things and having a whole electorate that looks like us. That's a problem. I question America. Is this America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, where we have to sleep with our telephones off of the hook because our lives be threatened daily because we want to live as decent human beings in America? I stand before you today as a candidate for the Democratic nomination for the Presidency of the United States of America. I am not the candidate of Black America, although I am Black and proud. I am not the candidate of the women's movement of this country, although I am a woman, and I'm equally proud of that. I am not the candidate of any political bosses or fat cats or special interests. I stand here now without endorsement from many big name politicians or celebrities or any other kind of prop. I do not intend to offer to you the tired and glib cliches which for too long have been accepted part of our political life. I am the candidate of the people of America. Can I get the now bar, please? No problem. One dollar. Have a good one. Got it. Hi, can I get a now bar, please? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. One dollar. Thanks. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Hey, uh, let me get a now bar. Sure. One dollar. Appreciate you. You got it. How's it going? Can I get a now bar? 
Hey, stop right there! <laughs> 